Okay, um, <clears throat> this one, I have both a notes and I have a slide <clears throat> I want to go through with you. Okay, so um, let's see the notes here. That's what it looks like. I don't remember. Okay, so chapter 14 and I, I and the actually um and the schedule I put like chapter 10 just like two pages but uh, usually it's only chapter 14 and has to do with scripts <clears throat> and batches uh, I'm not gonna require you to do any of the command line prompt um, from there you can if you want to explore it it's, that's completely fine but we're not gonna do that there so you can do either that or you can execute your commands directly within the um, studio which is completely cool okay um, <clears throat> So let's see, I have that, and let me look at the other one, the uh, PowerPoint here. And maybe we'll go on to PowerPoint first. <clears throat> okay, I want to cover the uh, variables. Okay, now you can declare variables to store data, just like any programming language. <clears throat> let's see. I just know that a script, okay, when I talk about a script, is um, kind of like the one I, I have you... Um, install in the previous exercise. Okay, you run the script one time and it executes, it uh, builds a database, builds a table, and sort all the data all at once. Okay, that's its script. And so you can pass that script to anybody um, that runs a SQL Server and they can, they can duplicate that script. So sometimes it's going to be really short, sometimes it could be as long as, um, you know, maybe 100 lines, 100,000 lines of code. Okay, and the idea is to make it run so that it, it runs from line one all the way down to the end line without any error. That's it. That's a perfect script. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to run this PowerPoint here, and we're going to go through these um, slides. I usually don't use slides, which um, it's kind of hard to uh, um, <clears throat> not to with this one. So let's see. Okay. So, we'll talk about variables, uh, temporary tables, something that we haven't talked about, <clears throat> haven't used in, in, uh, in the past yet, um, and control structures. When we hear the term control structures, it's always your if and else block and your case select, uh, case block and, and so on. And we have a while loop. Okay? <clears throat> so, um, and these are usually referred to the T-SQL variables only. T SQL means it's only part of Microsoft. It is not portable to other uh, languages. Okay, most of these are not um, because we have these functions and these uh, very unique only to um, SQL Server. And same thing with Oracle and, and uh, you know DB2 and so forth. They have their own functions and so forth. So it's not portable. Um, most of them are, are not anyway. So we have <clears throat> something called scalar variables, and these are just local variables. Okay, and they store data in RAM. Um, they're not permanent, it's just RAM. When you run execute, then you store a variable um, to store some data, and you can make some uh, execution or, or some type of manipulation with those variables within that. We call it a batch. Okay, a batch is nothing more than a sequence of uh, SQL statements that contain within one unit, and you you actually um, put it into a single batch and call it and then you would separate each batch with the command go, right? You've seen that before, okay? So when you issue a command go, that's one batch or one a sequence of, of code, okay? So <clears throat> let's talk about these variables here. You can declare a variable <clears throat> with the keyword declare or that declare statement, and then followed by the name of your identifier, okay? You always have to use the at symbol in front of it. This is a single at symbol. <clears throat> And there's also sometimes you see the two at symbols, okay? The single at symbol means just a local variable. The two at symbols, it uh, tells you that it's a global variable. And usually we don't uh, declare it, but um, some of the built-in uh, functions um, or, you know, um, uh, variables inside the SQL Server uses the two uh, at symbols, okay? But usually just one set at symbol followed by the name of that identifier. It follows the same rule as you would um, declare table names and so forth. Okay, 
and then you must also declare a data type, just like your column fields or fields in the table. Um, and then when you want to declare that, if you don't assign any data to it, then the uh, default value will always be null. Okay, so that's the um, general rule for that. So here is the uh, syntax for that. <coughs> it may look complicated, but it's not that complicated. Okay, we'll, we'll see how that's done. So we can declare a variable of type, uh, any data type here. This part, you can see, looks just like the um, column in your in the table. Down here, you can also declare a table name of the table type. Okay, that means you can uh, notice that you, you, when you create a table, it goes into the database, right? So when you do it this way, it stays in memory, it stays in RAM only, and then once you um, um, close or terminate the script, then data is wiped out, okay? Only for uh, temporary data. <clears throat> Okay, so here are some examples of how you declare variables. Um, if I'm going to declare a variable called user, put an add symbol there, and then has a uh, var chart of 25. Okay. Um, <clears throat> same thing with int, uh, cost, money, char, and so on. And this is a table here. So I have to declare a variable called my table, and it's a table type. So you put a table here as a, as a data type. And then inside here, it looks just like your regular table. You give an ID uh, of the data type. If it's a primary key, you put that. If it's an identity, you make that identity just like just like your table. There's some limitations as well, uh, but usually you have the same uh, stuff in here. So watch her and so on. So now the variable name my table is now a table in memory, and you can add data to it. You can uh, delete data. Uh, do whatever you need to do inside this table here, okay? And if you have, <clears throat> let's just say, a certain set of table, uh, if you match that with a real table, you can actually, you know, uh, pass all those data from RAM into the actual table itself, okay? So <clears throat> we'll, we'll do some examples in there soon. Uh, you can also declare uh, more than one variables um, at the same statement. Notice that I, I put a semicolon at the end of that statement here. I just put it in a separate line. You can do that as well. You put it into a single line. That's okay. You just have to um, separate each variable with a comma. Okay. So here I'm not assigning the values at all to all, all these three variable names here. Um, and you can do you can have more of this. Or as you can see, you can also assign the values right away and <clears throat> like this. Or you can do it in a separate line. So the first one here, I use I'm using the word set. You need to put a set here, unlike like JavaScript or other languages. You cannot just say, you know, age is equal to 20. <clears throat> okay, you have to use the keyword set in front of it, and then set that to equal 20, like an English phrase. Okay, if you declare a variable name and then you did not set uh, or assign any values, after that, if you want to assign a value, you have to use the word set or select. Okay, we'll go, we'll go over what they, why they are different. Or if you want to assign the values right away, then you can do that in one line. <clears throat> okay, so just say declare the total count of n type equals that value. And this value here could be a um, string or the red little like I have here, or this value could be coming from a, another variable, or it could be coming from directly from a select statement. <clears throat> okay, so if you select instead of ten, I'll just say select. Um, you know, the max value of total from table X, okay? And then the, whatever, whatever that value is will be assigned to this variable name, okay? <clears throat> um, and then here, I just want to show you again that you cannot just say, uh, once you declare a variable name without a value, and you want to say cost is equal to 25.5, you can't do that, you have to use the set in front, okay? So kind of what I mentioned earlier. Um, and then, uh, so I mean, from here on, as well, the middle one. After this, you want if you want to change the int, I mean, the total count to another value, or if you want to modify it or update it, then you have to use the word set again. Okay, straightforward. Uh, scope here. The scope of a variable uh, is from the point you declare it until the end of the batch. Okay, or uh, if you <coughs> 
we don't do store procedure yet or within a procedure. It's like a function, right? Within a function, then that is a local scope. Okay, so that variable only exists within that local scope. Okay, um, and then every batch of the statements, you have to uh, use the command go. The word go here is really not a, a um, it's only for a uh, SQL Server. It's a T-SQL thing. Uh, it, I mean, so Oracle doesn't have it, like MySQL doesn't have it. Okay, they have their own special command to do it. But, um, but in SQL Server, is the go. You cannot put a go um, on with any other um, lines or characters. It has to be on its own separate line with uh, no characters in front of it, no other characters behind after either. It's just its own line, <coughs> own statement. Otherwise, you have an error. Okay, so there's an example of that. <coughs> so I have uh, variable scope. The first part, the first two lines are one batch, and then the second is, is just, even though it's a single statement, is another batch. So the go here <coughs> separates the two. So what I mean, when I declare, I declare a variable called number of int type assigned a value of 10, and if I want to print that out, I just put a print command, and then this variable times 2, I get a 20. Okay? Yeah, you put the word go here. Now, as soon as you put the word go, then this variable number is dead at that point. Okay? After that, if you want to print it again, if you want to reference that same variable name, uh, plus 2, for example, you do that, you get an error. Because it says it's no longer, uh, um, it's not declared. Okay, so they show you that a... These numbers, um, these variables have a local scope within that block of code. Okay? Right. Um, here is another uh, way how you can use variables in your script and your uh, T, uh, SQL statements. So here I have a, uh, a user var char of 10 assigned the value of admin. I have another one of total money with no values assigned to it. And here you can see that I have a select statement, select everything from the users table where the username is equal to the add user. Okay, so instead of saying equal to the actual admin, I just put the user variable name here, which is very pretty straightforward. We used that before, we just never used the variable name yet. Okay, so it's like that. Um, you, can come, you can say where username is that or where uh, total is greater than another variable name. Another example here is select the variable name equal to the sum, the aggregate of total. This total is the field or column inside the sales table, right? <clears throat> what this one does is that we, it doesn't return anything back when you do it this way because this is a variable name here. The word total is a variable name. So this statement, all it does is it returns, it, it calculates the total here, and then whatever that total is, assigns that to the variable called at total, and then it terminates. Okay, it doesn't return um, a list of, of total. It doesn't do that. Because you, you already assigned the total sum to that variable name. If you want to see the total itself, then you have to print that out. Okay. <clears throat> and that's different from if you don't put the, the at symbol, that's that's different. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then I'll, I will do a demo for this one here to see what that means. <clears throat> uh, this is a table variable name we just saw earlier. So I could declare a variable called user table <clears throat> of the table type, and then you declare two columns or two fields. Uh, ID and username here, and then after that, as long as it's still in the same batch, okay, <clears throat> I can treat that user table as a regular table, except it's a, it's a virtual table uh, in RAM, and then I can add the data to that table just like this. I'm adding three um, records to that table because it's a primary key, but it's not identity, so I have to I have to explicitly specify the value 1, 2, and 3 here. And then once you add that in there, you can select from that user table and it will get the data back, just like a regular table. Okay? The next one here is what's called a temporary table. 
Uh, temple tables are tables that are actually um, set or created inside that temp DB. If you remember the system database, uh, there are like about four of them, right? They have the master, they have the model, uh, the temp, and there's another one. Um, I forgot what it was. But the temp, temp DB is where you have stored this data. And you use this only for um, just for temporary while you're running your, your query. Once you close that query or that session, then your database, um, these tables um, are deleted. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the difference between the two here, the pound sign and the two pound signs here, is one is local session, one is to all sessions. And a session means like when you um, create, add a new query, you see the little tab. Each of those is a session. Okay. You see there's a session ID with them as well. I'll show you a little bit <clears throat> later. And so if you if you only create a single pound sign then that table only access is only local to that session. If you create a new session, then it's no longer available to that session. If you want your temp table to be available to all sessions, then put a two, the two pound signs in front of it. Okay? And then, um, and then you can treat these just like a regular table. Except when you close the session, if you close the session that actually created these tables, then the entire table gets deleted from memory and they're no longer accessible. 